Um, it's in the next, I'd say, few years that we're really going to see the impact of that. We've had enormous speculation in financial assets um, as a result of the low interest rates and the amount of monetary stimulation. And unfortunately, the monetary stimulation wasn't isolated to one country or a group of associated countries. It seemed to be a global impact. And so there was all sorts of misallocation of capital. Um, and with the higher interest rates, the speculative element is starting to come out of the market. Um, and that's going to drive people to some of the hard assets, you know, foods, yeah. energy, metals, um, are going to be, in my mind, the place to make your investment going forward, at least for the next four or five years. The dollar enjo has enjoyed a premium in the market ever since Bretton Woods, when all commodities were valued in dollar terms. And anyone who wanted to buy a commodity had to buy dollars first to buy the commodity. We're seeing how uh, it was Russia and China that first came along and started saying, well, we want you to use rubles or wands to buy. Those currencies still do not have the breadth that the dollar has in terms of usage. But as you pointed out, there are other countries that are lining up behind and saying, well, we'd like to enjoy the benefits that the dollar had being able to be the reserve currency. I don't think we're quite ready for that, but it's... The cracks are appearing along the wall, and that is a definite direction. And the sanctions that are being placed on these countries will just accelerate that demand. The devaluation of fiat currencies could drive gold to $5,000 per ounce by 2027. According to Rob McEwen, Executive Chairman of McEwen Mining and Michelle McCord. McEwen also talks about his view for copper which he claims will be a critical metal as the globe rushes towards electrification, and the contract he made with automaker Stellantis and international mining firm Rio Tinto to develop his copper mine. Another crypto and macro specialist, Richard Hart, will share his unique outlook on where the market is headed, the likelihood of a recession, and the best ways to invest in cryptocurrencies. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Mastering DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way, with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. Rob McEwen Outlook for Gold Price in 2023. How it's going to perform? I, I've, I have a $5,000 number on gold. You're still sticking to oh, the $5,000. Hard, hard and fast. And by what, more or less, timeline? Let's say three years. Three years, $5,000 yeah. gold. Is that necessarily a good thing? In the sense for of me what it, it is. For you, <laughs> for you it is. But in the sense of what it means has happened on the global economy, does it signal that we're probably hit some a point of chaos, some point of global conflict? Would $5,000 gold indicate that, quite frankly, you know, hell has broken loose or the, you know, hmm. that the, the, the proverbial something has hit the fan if we hit $5,000 gold? Well, it would mean that likely that the U.S. dollar has dropped in value, that um, people are going to harder currencies, that there is some pain occurring Maybe real estate prices might be feeling it because they're less liquid. You have to remember, gold has a very special element. It is liquidity. Yeah. You can sell your gold in two days and get your money. If you want to sell your house, it, it rarely goes in two days. Maybe it went a couple of years ago when there was all sorts of speculation. Um, the cost of getting gold has gone up in price. So you're just ratcheting up the price. Um, I think a lot of currencies are going to become less valuable. I was looking at an article the other day, they were talking about Lebanon. And in 1990s, 
seven. The exchange rate was 1,507 Lebanese pounds for one dollar. At the end of December last year, 15,000 Lebanese pounds bought one dollar. Yeah. And right now it takes 80,000 pounds to buy a dollar. That is a country that's been suffering civil war. A lot of the production base is gone, but we've dem demolished a lot of our production base and outsourced it. What are the possible investment implications you should follow, according to Rob McEwen? If you're feeling very uncertain, you might want to buy bullion. Uh, bullion's outperformed the equities so far, um, but it's safer. Uh, you could then go into an ETF, although there are fees attached to that and you might not want, you might want the physical so you can walk away. You then you look at uh, gold shares, which company you buy. You buy the seniors, they pay a dividend. So you get a bit of an income and you'll probably, there'll be a, a target of a lot of the institutional buying. I personally live in an area which I would consider high up the risk curve, and that's in the junior space, right. where you can see stocks trading for pennies that go to dollars when you get the right cycle. And um, that's, <laughs> for me, as, and I, I probably am not your normal investor, so I'm not good at advising people on what yes, they want. Yes, you, you have... There's an announcement that I'll be making, I'll be owning 37% of a junior called Satori, and it trades for about five or, uh, they made, when I, they made the announcement it was five cents, it's now, I think it was up to 14 or 17 cents. But it's probably got a lot more room, and that's why I bought. And uh, I'm looking at the junior space and seeing, we should be bringing a couple of those together to get a bigger market presence. Um, and easier to finance. What is the ticker of the junior that you're looking for? <laughs> they, they, it's Bud. They were trying to become a cannabis company at one point. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, Rob McEwen thoughts regarding inflation and Fed. What's coming next? Insist and get higher. Um, you asked earlier on about the dollar. Yeah. If the dollar weakens, many of the commodity prices are going to go up. Your input costs are all going up right now. Some of that was temporary because of COVID and the dislocation of log logistics. Um, but there's shortages all over the place right now. The mining industry is suffering not only consumables, but people. There's a big question, where'd they go? And, and they're going to be uh, demanding higher wages to compensate for the inflation that they're experiencing right now. So a weakening dollar would mean higher prices for most goods. Cutting the, the bond with China means when I go to Home Depot to buy a circular saw, it's gonna be more expensive because they were the, the factory to the world if you, for clothing, for all sorts of issues. Um, and that's why I think people are going to turn to the precious metals, which are accepted around the world. You're seeing central banks being buyers for yeah. the first time for the reserves because they're not trusting the currency markets anymore. 2022 won. Um, but I think it's temporary. It, the rates will go higher. And the Fed rates will go higher? Do you have an idea of where do you think we could see the Fed terminal rate at? If you look back to the late 60s, or late 70s, um, rates were moving along and uh, the war was causing all sorts of shortages. Volcker came in when it was 18%. Um, we're still some distance away from that. But you're gonna see government actions, maybe the relief of student loans, maybe it's going to be more programs to uh, push money back out, like the COVID period, um, to compensate for the higher cost of living that's coming at us. So we'll have money given out by the government to compensate for high cost of living caused by money given out by the government. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but do the governments make much sense? I, yeah. Um, and you're, you're, you're coming up to a point, there's a, going to be a decision point when um, we reach the budget limit. And that's supposed to be around June. And in past periods when that's happened, you've had an almost an immediate correction in the stock market. 
um, where it's headed south for a moment. Um, I, I just look at it, I, I think there's going to be hesitation, but rates may pause for a bit, but they have to move higher. The cost of money is going up. Right. You the macroeconomic outlook for the coming year, according to Richard Hart's projections. I think as far as prices go, they will eventually stop raising rates. When they do that, it's going to let all the risk on assets start going up. Crypto will go up the most. Okay. As long as you have a 30% discount on grayscale Bitcoin, which holds 3% of all the Bitcoin, you are not going to get a bull market. And right now the grayscale discount is like 32 or 33%. So you can give grayscale money for fake Bitcoin, but they really hold it. They really have it. What do you mean proven. fake Bitcoin? Well, it's encapsulated. You can't redeem it. So if grayscale is a trust company that holds 3% of all the Bitcoin, they've got like a hundred and I don't remember how many coins, but it's 3% of the total stack. Maybe it's like 270,000 coins or something. And they've got a uh, the trust company that holds them and they charge like 2% override fee a year. So they make like $600 million a year net, just sitting on everyone else's Bitcoin, which is a pretty good deal for them. And uh, you can buy shares in their company that don't give you any right to the underlying Bitcoin. Yeah. But, you know, they really hold it. And so, and, and usually their stuff trades at a premium as well. Usually it trades at like a 20% premium historically. So this 30% uh, uh, deficit is the highest it's ever been. 34, like 34.07, I think was the max so far, maybe mm -hmm. a couple months ago. So now my, my thesis is, how did they get 3% of all the Bitcoin? Because Legacy has so much money to shove into their regulatory arbitrage uh, publicly traded vehicle on OTCQX bulletin board. And there's a lot of people with their LP agreements that are restricted that they can't just buy a currency and they can't just buy speculative stuff, but they can buy a stock. So they like, that's why there's so much money in Grayscale because there's a lot of companies that want uh, exposure to crypto, but can't get it any other way. It sounds like I'm giving a Grayscale ad here. Listen, guys, if you're giving someone else your money, that's the opposite of why crypto was invented. Crypto is invented so that you hold your own keys and there's no middlemen and no counterparty risk. Richard Hart discusses the performance of Hex as well as its current decline. Like when Hex first launched, it was tied primarily to Ethereum. And then it was tied primarily to USDC. And then some will came along and tied it to Ethereum. But then that will went away. It's tied back to USDC again. So it's really up to the market participants on what pairs they want to provide liquidity. And so if you look at Hex versus Bitcoin, Hex is up versus Bitcoin 250 fold now. Today, as we speak, from January 5th of 2020, it's up versus the dollar, 250, what is it? Two, it's 25, God darn it, whatever a quarter of 10,000 X is, 250 or 2,500X. So the, the returns are still absolutely insane. And, and that's the thing is it's like, okay, if Bitcoin's going to drop 75, Ethereum's going to drop 85, and Hex is going to drop 95, which one of them do you think is going to get up the hardest? Let's look at Bitcoin. In, five, in the five years from the all-time high of 2018, 2017, at the end of it, early 2018, till uh, five years later, Bitcoin did a 3.5x its all-time high. It went from 20K to 69K in five years. It's trash. <laughs> it's like, it's absolute garbage. And the, and the, in two years, Hex went up 10,000 X. So like you used to be, so let's take Ethereum. You used to be able to get 2000 Ethereum for one Bitcoin when they had their crowd sale. Now you can get, uh, I think 14. To what extent do you agree with the recommendations made by these specialists? Tell us in the comments. We hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey. Be sure to check out our crypto brand called Cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content. Till next time, goodbye.